Today we are here with a video on the best route to build your account in old school RuneScape. RuneLite is truly one of the best resources. Welcome to the most efficient quest guide. OSR's efficient POH guide. 12 mil GP an hour. I successfully completed 1 to 99 fletching in 1 hour and 38 minutes. I want to slow down. I've felt like I've been in a race for the past 10 years. It didn't used to be like this. I used to be an adventurer. But I'm guilty too. I held spacebar through every piece of quest dialogue. I never stopped to look around. I looked up how to get the fastest experience. This isn't a story, it's a clicking simulator and our lives are ticking away! I'm taking a stand against efficiency scape to bring us back to fantasy and to imagination. Welcome to my guide lock to Iron Man. I'm going to be exploring Gilinor to learn her secrets. My goal is to dig deeply into the lore and give this game the attention that it deserves. I hope you join me on my journey. Let's go! Hello YouTube! Welcome back to the We Skill Now YouTube channel. Today we're starting a brand new series. This is a series about a fresh, hardcore Iron Man account on which I'm going to be doing quests and looking for any lore that I can, all without any guides. Why do I want to do this? It's because of a lot of guilt that I feel about the way that I got my quest cape on my main account. I consider myself to be somewhat knowledgeable about this game, but if you were to ask me about storylines and lore, I would feel really, really dumb if you asked me any specific question about it. I want to change that today, and I want to bring you along on the journey. This series is a stand against efficiency scape. We're going to read every bit of dialogue, and we're going to examine characters, and that's the goal of this whole series, to learn as much as we can about Gilinor, this place that is home to so many of us, and the place where so many of us, including me, grew up in. Now, if you're interested in this, or if you just want to come along on the journey, please consider subscribing to the channel. That's it. Let's head into Cook's Assistant. One of the things that really inspires me about this journey, about this series, is seeing this game as a new player would see it. This is the tile, the very tile that you spawn on in this game. What do you see? You're in front of a castle. There's a couple of buildings around. There's a really, really goofy looking dude named the Lumbridge Guide right here in his blue coat. Okay, a couple of towers. So Lumbridge Castle has this defensive wall. It's really weird. Lumbridge is a little bit weird to me, actually. They've got this very big castle, which I think is more of like a defensive unit than anything. But what are they defending? Their citizenship is like a general store, a blacksmith, a guy that sells axes, a church, and a cemetery. Where, where's the residential area? Where are the residents? But you enter the castle as any curious person would. Couple of paintings on the wall. I believe that these are the same paintings that are repeated in so, so many places around RuneScape. Um, but we can examine them, actually. Portrait. Hail to the king. I am going to note what this looks like. I think that we're going to be able to find this king in other castles, this exact one. And especially this landscape. This landscape's everywhere. Okay, chef, uh, you're one of the first NPCs some people might talk to based exclusively on their previous experience with MMOs and knowing that perhaps this blue symbol on the minimap means that there's a quest around here. You're the only person around that doesn't have an attack option and uh, makes sense to talk to, so I'll click talk to cook. What am I to do? What's wrong, your cook? <laughs> your cook, why don't you bake a cake? Bake me a cake. You don't look very happy. All right, 
we're not going to go too deeply in this. I know that I'll burn myself out if I try to go too deeply into Cook's Assistant. Because this is just your run-of-the-mill, learn how to do the occasional... There's a knife spawn here. Oh, that's handy. Go collect three things and then that's a quest. So what's wrong? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm in a terrible, terrible mess. It's the Duke's birthday today. And I should be making him a lovely big birthday cake. I think that adjective word order is really weird. I've forgotten to buy the ingredients. I'll never get them in time now. He'll sack me. What will I do? I have four children and a goat to look after. Can we find the cook's house? Would you help me, please? Uh, yes, I will start the cook's assistant. Oh, thank you, thank you. I need milk and egg and flour. I'd be very grateful if you can get them for me. So where, where do I find these ingredients then? Okay, so you can ask about any of these. That was going to be my first question. Does the game help you? Does it hold your hand in finding certain places? There are certain quests that are so easy and that people have done so many times. I'm not going to be able to pretend that I'm a new player and that I don't know where these things are. Cook's assistant is one of them. We all know where the egg is, the flour, the milk. And so I'm just going to go get these things. I already conveniently have a bucket and a pot in my inventory from when I first logged in. So let's just get this quest done and move on to more interesting things. At one point in RS3, they changed the egg over here to like a giant egg. And so you specifically needed a special kind of egg to complete the quest. There's a cow right here that I can milk. There, You used to be able to milk any cow at all, but then they made specific dairy cows. There's a right-click milk option. There's also an interesting right-click steel cowbell option, which is so weird that that's like an option that every new player sees. Steel, cow, steel cowbell, which you don't steal a lot of cowbells in the game. It's an action that you do very specifically one time for a penguin quest. So there's a couple of goblins standing here on this path. Oh wow, I, didn't, I never realized how many goblins there really were. There's like eight in this path right in front of the mill. It's kind of cool. Um, it'd be interesting to me if these guys were like actually aggressive, but they're just kind of peaceful goblins. If you're a resident of Lumbridge, apparently you just live alongside a bunch of goblins who are just roaming around there's so many of them. And I forgot, like, there's a massive crowd of goblins right across the bridge from, from the castle. Are they defending themselves from goblins? The above-ground goblins seem, like, too stupid to, like, launch an attack or anything. They're warlike, but what's their relationship with Lumbridge? There's so many of them. Okay, use the grain on the hopper. This always confused me as a kid. I believe you just pump these hopper controls once, and then you go all the way down, and then you get flour. All right, I've got all three ingredients that the cook needs. He doesn't need any sugar or anything to make his cake taste good. Maybe he already has it. Okay, that's a reasonable thought to have. Maybe he already has some ingredients. But I'm going to use my teleport back to Lumbridge shortcut to get there faster. All right, cook, I've got your stuff. Here's a bucket of milk. Here's a pot of flour. Here's an egg. You've brought me everything I need. I am saved. Thank you. So do I get to go to the Duke's party? I'm afraid not. Only the big cheeses get to dine with the Duke. Well, maybe one day I'll be important enough to sit on the Duke's table. Is that the correct prepositional phrase? Because when I picture that, being important enough to sit on the Duke's table, that's like really important and just bad manners. That's just rude now that I think about it. How about at the Duke's table? Maybe, but I won't be holding my breath. 300 cooking experience. We've just done our first quest and we've found our first bit of lore. we have It's literally the Duke's birthday. The day that you log into RuneScape, it is the Duke's birthday. Okay, uh, that gives me four cooking and let's go find another quest to do. Let's start Restless Ghost. Maybe there's some lore that I haven't read in this one before. Talk to Father Eric is how I'm going to pronounce that. Eric. Welcome to the Church of Holy Saradomen. Okay. 
The gods in RuneScape are one of the things that I'm extremely, extremely interested in learning more lore about. So, we now know that Mistelin, Lumbridge in particular, has a church of Ceridomen in it. You can tell by the yellow stars in the window. I guess this is Ceridomen imagery. This one is especially. This one down here is. But he's got stained glass windows that include red, white, and blue and yellow. Okay, Father Eric, what are you saying? Welcome to the Church of Holy Ceridomen. Who's Ceridomen? Nice place you've got here. I'm looking for a quest. I'm going to learn more about Ceridomen. Who is Ceridomen? Surely you've heard of the god, Ceridomen. He who creates the forces of goodness and purity in this world? I cannot believe your ignorance. Okay, so here's the first words about Ceridomen that we hear in the game. He who creates forces of goodness and purity in this world. Now, I know things about gods in RuneScape. And it, it's been my opinion, after I thought I got woke, that Sarah Doman's not necessarily a good guy. He's got imagery of a good guy. He's blue. He's against Zamorak, who's got demons on his side. He's evil. But I'm pretty sure Sarah Doman is just as self-centered and mean as Zamorak. And Guthix is actually the good guy in my mind. But so far, the game has presented us with he who creates the forces of goodness. Look at his robes, by the way. Blue star. These are really cool robes. I am suddenly obsessed with Father Eric's robes. This is the god with more followers than any other, at least in this part of the world. Oh. I didn't realize the RuneScape gods were concerned about follower count as much as I am, so um, I'm trying to get more followers than Sarah Doman, so please follow me on Twitter. This is the god with more followers than any other, at least in this part of the world. Oh, okay, so maybe Zamorak's killing it on Twitter. He who created this world along with his brothers Guthix and Zamorak? Okay, that's not true, but according to Father Eric... According to the citizens of Lumbridge, they believe that Sarah Doman, Guthix, and Zamorak created this world. Uh, I guess they did in a way, right? They shaped it. Um, okay, oh, that Sarah Doman. Oh, sorry, I'm not from this world. We'll be, we'll be not from this world. Maybe he'll tell us more. Oh, sorry, I'm not from this world. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Father Eric is freaking out. <laughs> uh, that's... Strange. So Father Eric thinks I'm freaky, which is just good British humor. Like, how would this person react if someone said that they're not from this world? Um, I thought things not from this wor world were all, you know, slime and tentacles. What does that mean? Jagex, what are you saying here? You don't understand. This is an online game. Am I am. Do you like my disguise? Oh, so, okay. This is really silly. I'm going to say that I'm slime and tentacles right now. Do you like my disguise? Arn! Avant, foul creatures from another dimension. Avant! I've never actually heard this word. Uh, be gone in the name of Sarah Doman. This might be the, the end of this conversation. Okay, okay, I was only joking. I actually did learn some things about what Father Eric thinks of Sarah Doman. I'm very intrigued. But um, I guess I'll say nice place you've got here. Uh, it is, isn't it? It was built over 230 years ago. Okay, I'm looking for a quest. That's lucky. I need someone to do a quest for me. Start the Restless Ghost quest. Yes. Okay, let me help then. Thank you. The problem is, there's a ghost in the church graveyard. I would like you to get rid of it. If you need any help, my friend Father Ernie is an expert on ghosts. I believe he is currently living as a hermit in Lumbridge Swamp. He has a little shack in the far west of the swamps. Exit the graveyard through the south gate to reach the swamp. I'm sure if you told him that I sent you, he'd be willing to help. My name is Father Eric, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Take care traveling through the swamps. I've heard they can be quite dangerous. I will, thanks. All right, so here's what I love about this series and not using a guide. I'm not starting this quest with any of the items that I know I'll need in this quest or any of them in the future. I'm just going to react to what the characters tell me and do things in order. So Father Eric just told me to go see Ernie. Father Ernie? Was it Father Ernie? Uh, to go 
deal with this ghost problem. He lives in the far west of the dangerous swamp. He told me to go to the graveyard and exit south and then go to the far west. So we're going to do that. First, I might stop into this house because, I mean, I know the ghost is here. But what happens if we try to interact with the ghost now? Open coffin. A ghost comes out. Boom. Talk to the restless ghost. Look at that. Hello, ghost. How are you? Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I don't speak ghost. Oh, that's interesting. Any hints where I can find some treasure? I'm going to ask him that. And he just says a bunch of woos. Thank you, this has been very helpful. Woo. How about I search the coffin right now? You find some human remains? All right. Oh, spooky, says the examined text. Okay, so the dangerous swamp has non-aggressive level 10 big frogs, level 10 giant rats. I actually thought that they might be aggressive, but it doesn't seem like that's the case so far. So I went to the far west of the swamp. And I found a shack. And there's a man living here as a hermit. I remember parts of this quest. So I would have gotten here without, without a guide. I did get here without a guide. But I'm not confused yet, right? So let's open the door. Oh. Oh, I thought I had to knock at this door. All right. So we're going to talk to Father Ernie. Go away. I'm meditating. Well, that's friendly. Father Eric sent me to talk to you. I've come to repossess your house. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see what he says on that one. <laughs> Under what grounds? <laughs> Repeated failure on mortgage repayments. I don't know. I just wanted this house. Let's do the mortgage repayments. I'm into that. What? <laughs> but I don't have a mortgage. I built this house myself. Sorry, I must have gotten the wrong address. All the houses look the same around here. What houses? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, I like this. Never mind. I think that I, in this situation, would say Father Eric sent me to talk to you. I suppose I'd better talk to you then. What problems has he gotten himself into this time? He's got a ghost haunting his graveyard. You mean he gets himself into lots of problems? I'm actually interested in that, so let's check this out. Yeah, for example, when we were trainee priests. <laughs> Aren't trainee priests like monks or something? He kept on getting stuck up bell ropes. Okay, this is actually so good. So Father Eric is... A klutz. He gets stuck up rope bells, which is insane. Like, let go of the rope when it's going up, <laughs> dude. <laughs> anyway, I don't have time for chit chat. What is his problem this time? He's got a ghost haunting his graveyard. Oh, the silly fool. I leave town for just five months, and already he can't manage. Sigh. Well, I can't go back and exercise it. I vowed not to leave this place until I had done a full two years of prayer and meditation. Tell you what I can do, though. Take this amulet. Father Ernie hands you an amulet. This is an amulet of ghost speak, so-called, because when you wear it, you can speak to ghosts. A lot of ghosts are doomed to be ghosts because they have left some important task uncompleted. Maybe if you know what this task is, you can get rid of the ghost. I'm not making any guarantees, mind you, but it is the best I can do right now. Thank you. I'll give it a try. Now, in our quest, we've received this ghost speak amulet. So far, what we've uh, pieced together in the, in the timeline is this. The day that you log into RuneScape, it is the Duke's birthday. It's interesting because old school RuneScape and RuneScape 2 are kind of a land frozen in time. So it's always the Duke's birthday, which I believe it- oh, Aggressive giant rat, level six. They are aggressive. It is dangerous. It's the Duke's birthday. I believe that is the setting of recipe for disaster because that might be the very meal that is the Duke's birthday. Is it? Is that the Duke's birthday that day on recipe for disaster? Because no one does that. No one gets all the way there in one day. So, it's a land frozen in time. Meanwhile, five months prior to the player logging into RuneScape, Father Ernie, who apparently also ran this church, moved to a shack that he built either in those five months or previously to go live here and meditate. He, it's really important that he stays here. It's so important that he won't walk a few hundred meters back to this graveyard to help exercise a ghost. It's so important that he meditates instead. So, here I am, wearing the amulet of ghost speak, and I'm going to talk to this ghost, see what he wants. 
Let's see what happened. Father Ernie clued me into ghosts generally have an uncompleted task. Hello, ghost. How are you? Not very good, actually. What's the problem, then? Did you just understand what I said? You've got a cool hat, dude. I like this guy. He kind of makes me think he might be a farmer or just like a young traveler. He died for something. Yep, now tell me what the problem is. No, you sound like you're speaking nonsense to me. Wow, this amulet works. Um, I think I'd say that. Wow, the amulet works. Oh, it's your amulet that's doing it. I did wonder. I don't suppose you can help me. I don't like being a ghost. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. Do you know why you're a ghost? Nope, I just know... I can't do much of anything like this. The ghost despawned in front of me in the game, but I can still talk to him. I've been told a certain task may need to be completed so you can rest in peace. I should think it is probably because a warlock has come along and stolen my skull. If you look inside my coffin there, you'll find my corpse without a head on it. Pretty, okay, pretty casual way to talk about that. Do you know where this warlock might be now? I think it was one of the warlocks who lives in the big tower by the sea southwest from here. Okay, I will try and get the skull back for you. Then you can rest in peace. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that would be such a great relief. It's so dull being a ghost. Okay, so the ghost's biggest problem is that he's bored because he can't interact with the world. Now I'm going to go southeast from here to go to the wizard's tower to get this guy's skull back. And we have reached this magnificent bridge that leads to the wizard's tower. So we've got a guy named Cedridor. We, we would look all over this, this tower. I just happen to know that the skull is in the basement though. Okay, so there's a full skeleton here. He's got a sword in his hand, which is really awesome. I like the foreshadowing here, but here is the skull. Now, interestingly, there is a Banner to Sarah Doman right behind this altar. Mmm, decorative. <laughs> okay, okay. On this banner is what I believe to be Lumbridge Castle, even though I don't think it quite looks like that. It's the RuneScape logo, just a couple of crossed swords, and then Sarah Doman. Sarah Doman colors, the stars. This seems to be a citizen of Lumbridge. It was a citizen of Lumbridge because they were buried in the graveyard. And someone took a citizen of Lumbridge skulls and brought it here and, and put it on an altar that is some supporter of Sarah Doman. I know that when we try to take this skull, when we search the altar, this skeleton comes back to life. So, boom, take it. He stands up. He's level 13. He doesn't seem to be nerfed at all. I know that I can just run away, though. I don't have to kill it. And he's actually immediately not aggressive. So, I ran a few steps away and we're safe from, from the skeleton. One thing that's interesting about that skeleton is that he's kind of yellowy. I think normal skeletons are a little bit more white, right? Are these a different color? He's a different color than normal. What is this room? You go into this room, there's some gated bars, there's a couple of tables, and like in an awkward position, like awkwardly close to this altar, the table's like right there. If you're trying to, like, pray at this altar or something, you're, like, butting into this table. It's weird. There's an entire skeleton leaning on the wall. He's not there right now. I'm weirded out by your design choices, guys. There's an entire bed right here. This is weird. Now, I said that we were going to see that uh, painting of that king at the beginning of, the, of this journey again. Here he is. And this is examined. It's going to say, all hail the king. Oh, it's a different examine text. A painting of the king looking royal. It's the same picture, different examine text from the one in Lumbridge Castle. So there's a wizard there, wizard level 9, skeletons level 13. Weird, you know, hallway. Things are crumbling in the basement. I just realized that this entire wall, I believe that there's a roof above my head, but this entire wall you can see into. So... Was there some kind of magic explosion that blew out the wall or something? I think that we're at the end dialogue of this quest now. I just walked all the way from the Wizard's Tower back to here. Totally uneventful. But we're going to open up the coffin. And we're going to use the skull on the skeleton that has... Okay, we get a cutscene for this. Uh, release. Thank you, stranger. He disappears. He floats into the River Lum. Which, I don't know what that means. 
I think that that's worth looking into, though. We get a bunch of prayer experience. We get the item that we already had as a reward, all the way up to level 9 uh, prayer. But he floated out to here. This is interesting to me. If you look to where he floated, there is a broken raft, which is a shortcut. So I don't think that has to do with his death. I, I don't know why he floats into the River Lum. I believe I choose to believe that he was buried normally in this big important house honestly he's the only coffin in here and someone stole his head someone from Wizard's Tower um, are you gonna do the quest in any specific order no the order that we've gone in is we're looking through the eyes of a new player and being like oh what's around what's close to here what can I learn and if there's just happens to be a quest that like they see on the minimap they'll do it. So, so far we've done Cook's Assistant and Restless Ghost. And I think it's been a decent order so far. This whole series of it has been made possible by, possible by my wife considering editing the series. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the We Skill Now YouTube channel. God!